All right, so as I mentioned earlier, the quote for today, accountability. It says, accountability feels like an attack when you are not ready to acknowledge how your behaviors harm others. This is from Tamara uh, Renaye. Now, so um, um, based on the topic that we're discussing today, um, I just feel like, <laughs> why, why is really looking at me? <laughs> I feel like with all the drama happening, right, if only we can be accountable to Nigerians, I think it would, you know, lesser problems, will, like we'll face lesser problems if we're accountable to Nigerians. They're, they're, they're That's what I think. I think they're trying. Hmm? I hmm? think they're trying. Right? Hmm. Your leaders are the, trying. The new, are go the new government you? now. Really? Yeah. How? Okay. They sent um, some officials to cause up filling stations who were selling above a certain price. Oh, that's good. That's, good. that's being accountable now. All right, so a that. former Brazilian president, Fernando Colo de, la, de Melo, has been reportedly sentenced to eight years and ten months in prison for bribery and money laundering. Now, the punch also had gathered earlier today that um, a former governor of Ekiti State, Kayo de Fayemi, was being interrogated at the Zonal Command Office of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission in Ilori, Kwara State, over alleged misappropriation of about 4 billion naira. So it's our ladies' night out, and Jennifer, Mary, and I are discussing the topic. Can our leaders be held accountable? It's a simple thing. Question. <laughs> and when we open our phone lines, we really love to hear what you have to say about this. Um, but I would just want us to jump right into, first of all, our international holiday and what we found in the news today. Um, so, according to, so emphasizing the role of um, parents in raising or rearing of children, the Global Day of Parent recognizes that the family has a primary responsibility for nurturing and protecting of children for the full harmonious development uh, of their personality. Children should grow up in a family environment and in an atmosphere of happiness, love, understanding. Designated by the General Assembly in 2012, Global Day of Parents provides an opportunity to ap um, appreciate all parents for their selfless commitments to children and their lifelong sacrifice towards nurturing this relationship. This is a very important day. Uh, parenting is not an easy task. And I always say to people that um, we go to school to become doctors, we go mm -hmm. to school to, to become whatever, engineers and all of that. Nobody goes to any school to become a parent, right? Yeah. It just happens on you. You get pregnant and all of a sudden you are supposed to like cater for another human being, right? Um, not many people understand what parenting really is about and how intentional we must all be when it comes to um, raising our children. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, whatever it is that we do as parents can directly impact the outcome of the life of that um, child, you know, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years from now, right? I've seen people that said, if not for the fact that my father, my mother, like stood their grounds on certain things, yeah. I would have gone south. Some people's life literally had been clinched from the, from the shackles of, you know, whatever, Very based true. on, you know, just parental guidance. Some other people have been thrown into a life of, uh, what's it called, crime and all of that. Yeah. Same because of, again, parental yeah. influence, you know. So I don't know. What do you think, right? If you had a day to, I mean, if you had something to say to parents, what would that be? Um, it'll be thank you, actually. Um, I got a call from my mom today, and she somehow, funny enough, I really wasn't in a mood, but she just, she was very insistent that something was wrong with me. Mm. And, you know, she just started saying, you need to take it easy, you need to, you know, um, do this, don't hold things to heart. And she's been through a lot like she's going through something currently which kind of subconsciously is affecting me mm. and i was like she's still strong enough to tell you look you know don't worry god has us there's there's nothing we can't face and i'm just like no. where'd you get your strength Thanks, from bro. like where how are you this strong you know she doesn't want to tell me what is going on because she feels like oh 
but you're at work. You, you know, you have your life ahead of you. You have your things in front of you. I don't want to, you know, bother you. So she's, she's, you know, and I, I, I just wonder, like, how is, how do you just take mm. that on? Mm. You know, it's so, <laughs> to all parents out there, it's not easy. Thank you. Thank you my for, mother and my father. for even betting, you know, going through the whole process of betting a child. I'm just grateful to every parent out there. It's not easy because, I mean, uh, there are individuals as well that have their own faults, that are, you know, have their own hurts and pain that they're dealing with, but they have to push this aside, you know, to um, groom the child, you know, to give the child the best, you know, and I think it's very commendable. It's not easy to be thank, a parent. Thank you to all our parents. Thank you My to My mother parents. can call you for of <laughs> Africa. But Jennifer, let me hear your thoughts quickly. Yeah, yeah, um, parents. yeah I think I appreciate um, parents because I don't think it, it's not an easy job. Like you said, it's not something you you yeah, learn. It's, it's one of these things where you keep learning mm. as you go. You can either break it or you can actually make it. <laughs> that kind of thing. And um, I mean, I traveled um, last week for burial and I saw my mom She's the only girl in her, in her family, so she had a lot of responsibilities, and she has a bad knee. So I saw her walking up and down, up and down, and she was doing everything. I have to tell her, please now, rest. She said she can't rest, she's the only one, and I've always known my mom is a strong woman, but this was a whole new level for me and i just saw her in like a different light and then even coming to my dad as well i had like a very vulnerable moment to my dad and it was actually i was like okay okay this is nice i mean we're getting we're getting to that point and if there's anybody who is my cheerleader my parents mm -hmm. especially my dad when my dad calls me the first thing he says is my presidential executive daughter and ah, i'm like <laughs> Okay, thank you. We hear that and not become president. I know. I mean, it's, it's very powerful. So, so, so thank you to all our parents out there, honestly. I don't think we give them credit enough. My yeah. father, yeah. amazing. As in, my father is one of the best fathers ever. In, in the, like, he's the best that you ever wish to have. Yeah. You know, you know, get wala. Just, you know, live his life, you know, and just once in a while, he checks up and says, okay, well, I hope, you know. And my mom, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> She'll be watching by now. She'll I know. I'll <laughs> call you for Africa, but again, it's because of genuine love. Yeah. Like she just genuinely want to like want to make sure that everything is fine with you. I tell her, stop bothering your head. Before you go and give yourself hypertension mm. or other thing, right? I so these days I try to manage her. Even if I'm going through something, I don't tell her because mm. if you tell her, mother can literally call you one thousand times just mm. to find out if that thing has been resolved. So. Um, it's also not good for their heart health at the yeah. age, you know. So just try to manage. But thank you so much to all the parents out there. You're doing a wonderful job. And for the parents that have missed it, it's never too late to start, you know, to start to retrace your step. Because really, our lives and the lives of our children and generations unborn, they are all dependent on how well we parent this generation or parent your children of now. All right, so let me quickly mention something that we'll now take our news. Um, crush oil thieves, Tinubu orders security agencies now the president um today had um directed service chiefs and heads of security and um, intelligence agencies to crush predators of oil theft saying that his administration will not tolerate the menace tinomu said this on uh, his that said also said that on his watch insecurity will bring uh will not bring nigerians to her to nigeria to her knees while other countries record achievements in key sectors of the economy uh, the president gave the directive in his main official meeting with security chiefs and intelligence heads led by the chief of defense staff, General Loki Rabo, at the presidential villa today. Um, so I like this, but you see, I don't want us to go back to where we are coming from. Let's stop giving blankets and vague, um, what's it called? Um, how do I put it? Vague orders. Because we've, we've heard this rhetoric several times. Nigeria has gone past all this and says, yeah, I'm, I'm, going to be, I'm going to clamp down. You know, they work. You understand? Thankfully, your vice president had said in his campaign that he has plans to curb insecurity in this country. So let us start to see all those plans in action. You don't even need to say anything. Let's just be seeing that things are happening. Why are you smiling? Easy, easy. Uh, I'm easy. I'm just telling you. 
Because there's no need for all this. Uh, we will crush it. You will bring it. Uh, uh, no need. <laughs> Just let us see action. Just action. do it. Do the work. <laughs> now with the beg. All right. So what did you find from us, Mary? Then I'll come back to my other news. Okay. President Tinubu reportedly appoints Femi Bajamila as chief of staff. According to PMN News, PM News, Bajamila's chief of staff, Olaf Bajamila. Bajamila. <laughs> Bajamila. <laughs> it's fine, continue. <laughs> chief of staff, Olaf Raju Smart Wasi, who confirmed the development, said that Bajamila was appointed by the president after several hours of meetings and consultations. The decision to pick him was said to have been made by the president after evaluating all possible candidates aspiring for the post among his loyalists. According to Smart, he was picked by the president after a final meeting with stakeholders that ended on Thursday morning, June 1st, at the villa in Abuja. Um, I think this is a very smart move. I think he will do well as chief of staff. Yeah. And I'm... Um, a lot of people. I'm actually, actually positive. Yeah, a lot of people anticipated this, and they're actually quite um, impressed, you know, because people actually had said that, you know, the best man for the job as his chief of staff mm. would, would be Bajabi Amila, right? Mm. So, um, um, so it's a good move, right? Even though some places I'm still saying that it's still unconfirmed, but mm, uh, they said he's yet to his, get yeah, his certificate. Yeah. But, I but mean, congratulations to Femi Bajabi Amila. Hopefully, you know, it will be a fantastic tenure for him. All right, so um, your story, Jennifer. All right, uh, so for me, Brazil's ex-president, Fernando Collor de Mello, bags 106 months imprisonment for bribery and money laundering. Okay. So the former president has been sentenced to eight years and ten months in prison for bribery. Um, so it is said that, um, that he had received about 30 million 30 million, 30 million rays in bribes from a subsidiary of state-run oil company, according to the courts. And then they also mentioned that the current Brazil president, Luiz Inácio Lula de Silva, was sentenced to a long prison term in 2017 for corruption and money laundering and spent 580 days in prison. But then the Supreme Court later um, overturned the sentence. This way. That's our conversation for today. So we'll, we'll rest it today. We'll come back to that. So this story also caught my attention, given that today is Global Parents Day, right? It says, Wase, students, supervisor, proprietors, and others arrested for exam malpractice. Now, the head of national, um, Nigerian National Office of the um, West Africa, African Examination Council, Patrick Aregan, on Thursday disclosed that 56... Uh, roadside operators were apprehended over their involvement in examination malpractice in the ongoing 2023 may june senior secondary school um, certificate examination he disclosed this while um, on inspection tour to some schools in abuja and he added that 15 others uh, compromising students school proprietors and teachers were um, also arrested he said that the arrest was made in meduguri ibadon abiokuta and Umwa here, adding that the students will, um, the, adding that the suspect will be handed to the police and will parade them on national television um, um, preparatory to their prosecution. So I like this, um, what's it called, this news. First of all, my son is writing work. So it's, it's absolutely not fair mm. that some people are using their brains to write exams. Yes, I'm very biased right now. <laughs> And some people are using their brains to write exams and all of a sudden I, i've seen I've, I've heard now i've heard things like this happening and I, the reason i say i wanted to tie it up with, with parents parents are just so interested in oh a stars all is mm. 37 is 50 b's you know you do not understand the process to which the child gets those seven stars and eight, eight stars and all of that let me tell you a lot of schools and these schools they know I said they are lying to themselves. A lot of secondary schools, they, they conduct examination practice as a school yeah. during most of these examinations. I heard so I saw someone that when I looked at her, I said, You don't have the strength for mathematics. How come you are getting A stars? No, we, we had a uh -uh. conversation. 
Gosh, because you will know somebody's strengths and their weaknesses. I'm, I mean. I'm a science inclined, so, so when I see someone that has the capacity for science subjects like math, English, and physics, I understand. You're making A's in math, you're making A's in further math, you're making A's, and you're studying mass communication. I said, why? Where's the correlation? Uh, let me not just lie to you. They helped us write the exam in the board. And she's she studying she mass clean. communication. Yes. She said, you can switch S, now. You don't get it. They helped them to stop. No. There's no how. And to no. calm down. I'm going to some. Don't distract my story. <laughs> Because they help them to write the exams in the hall. So she said, you know, it's almost like most schools, you know, when it comes to examination, because parents are only focused on, I want to see seven stars. They want to see the record of the school, how well the students are doing. So schools have become very, hmm. you know, very, okay, let's give them what they want, regardless of how the students make it, how they pass. So most of them go to the university and you see them struggling, right? So please. I'm happy that Wase is clamping down on this examination. <laughs> why, is, why is Mary smiling and looking at me? Mm, I'm happy I, that I clamping down, but it should go beyond that. I think how we can really solve exam malpractice problem must come from the angle of parents. Exam is not a do or die affair. If your child fails, let them go and rewrite the exam. You don't have to start to bribe teachers, bribe this, bribe that. My children, during exam, I don't even ask. I just say, okay, how was it? Fine, that's it. Do you understand? Even from when they were children, writing entrance examination, I took my, my sons to, to a particular school to go They didn't know they were going to go and write exam. That's how I, you know, I try to not put my mind on examination. So I think if parents are a lot more, you know, relaxed with this idea of, oh, I want to see the performance of the school, it will also curb, it will have a ripple effect to curb what's it called exam malpractice, if you ask me. Stop smiling at me. On that note, we'll take a break. <laughs> we come back from that break. Let's discuss accountability. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs>